Why do we study limits? Albert Einstein famously said, Once we accept our limits, we go beyond them. Limits help us explore the boundaries of the known and unknown, and thus they are the embodiment of the human spirit of relentless inquiry. In calculus, as well as in life, some functions vary continuously, while others jump or vary erratically. To investigate the behaviour of such functions and analyse them, we need the concept of limits. Now, suppose we want to pursue research in something of which nothing is known previously. Then how do we approach it? A logical way to move forward is to approach the unknown in its neighbourhood and accumulate more and more information by moving closer and closer. In the same way, in calculus, we will study many cases where a function may not be defined at a point. Say, for example, this case when the function value is missing at x equal to a. Here, we know nothing about the value of f of a. So what we do is explore the function in the neighbourhood of a and get as close as possible to a from both sides, the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Along with the missing values and boundary problems, we will be studying the slope of chords in a curve. Let us assume a function y is equal to f of x, and ab is a chord of the curve. If we draw lines parallel to the axis and make a right angle triangle with an angle, say theta, then tan theta equals delta y upon delta x. Now, we want this b to be as close as possible to a so that the chord becomes a tangent at a. For this to happen, b should be nearly a, but not a. In this case, we can take a limit of b approaching a and we get derivatives and differentiation. Another fundamental problem in calculus is the area under the curve. Suppose we wish to calculate the area under the curve for this function y is equal to fx between x is equal to a and x is equal to b. Here, what we will do is we will divide the area into n equal parts and draw rectangles. From the graph, we can see that the rectangles overshoot or undershoot the curve. To calculate the area of the curve, we will have to divide the region into infinite parts. Now, infinity is not a number, but an idea of something unlimited, endless and without bound. In this case, we can take a limit of n approaching infinity and we get integration. Without limits, there will be no calculus, for there will be no differentiation or integration. It will then just be the study of functions through trigonometry and coordinate geometry. So, in the end, I would just say, know your limits, but never stop trying to exceed them.